We're here with Laura Bryant and Barry Klein. Welcome. Thanks, Jay. Oh, so I just think you bring the greatest thing. So what are we doing today? <laughs> we are talking about the new craze that's sweeping the knitting world, faux fur. Of course, fur is all over ready to wear and lots of us don't like to harm the little animals that make right. that fur. So <laughs> we're looking at a really fabulous fur substitute that is perfect for knitters and uh -huh. really no one else has options for it. Um, there are a bunch of different kinds of faux furs. You can actually find it sometimes in wool. These are all nylon. Okay. You can also find it in acrylic and polyester, but to my mind, the nylon is the most luxurious and the most fur-like. Well, all you have to do is feel it. Yeah. Right. You all want you it to feel good on the yeah. body. All you it have to is, do is really feel it. great. I mostly like it, and, and you can see the, the heft of it. Yes. It really has a feeling of fur. Mm -hmm. I like to use it kind of sparingly. I like to use it as accents. Here's the trim on a, on a very luxurious wrap. Mm -hmm. We've got a little cowl and hat here. I love this idea. In That's the my hoodie, favorite. the inside of the hood mm -hmm. is faux fur, and just a little bit on the cuff as well. Right where you need to be warm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and while most of the um, manufacturers of faux fur tend to stick to animal colors, some hand dyers do really wild, crazy, yes. um, bright colors, and so we have sort of a selection showing what that can be. Right, and the thing about color is it can be placement and where you put it. So as you can see here, we've put it, we've alternated it, okay, uh, kind of like with, corduroy. With so the that, wool? Yes, it is with wool because this fiber doesn't have a lot of body. Okay. Okay, it is a chained fiber that Laura will show you the construction on, but in this case, we've alternated it with a wool. And by doing that, it reinforces it and it's used alternating so mm -hmm. that the whole thing isn't fur because a little goes a long way and it can get a little overpowering. It's a great pattern though. Right. It is. It's very, very sexy in the way it sits on the body, yes. it trims on the collar, it frames mm -hmm. your, your torso. Uh, it's the yeah. height of, of feminine. Well, I bet it's wonderful to wear. <laughs> it is. And the same thing on this vest next to me. It's just trimmed around. It's a really great accent. But you can also see that it's used as trim on a hat. It's been used on gauntlets. And it's just great. Okay, you put it on. And it just sits. Again, not <laughs> yes, for me, but you get it's, the idea. It is fairly feminine. It is. The cowl that I'm wearing is a super luxurious version. It's, it's big. It uses a couple of skeins, one mm -hmm. for each side. It's a little bit smaller cowl here. And one skein is enough okay. often to do to that. To make both I top and bottom. I suspect that that's true on your collar. Which yes. You knit, right? I just made it. And it took only one skein. Yes. And, in, and I had some left over. And in your case, you, you held the fur along with the body yarn. I Isn't did. that right? I did. And the same thing's true on the little jacket to your right. Just a touch of it at the collar. Uh -huh. One skein was enough. But there are some tricks to knitting with it. So okay. I'd like to show those to you. So it is an unusual construction. It's a chain construction, and you can see that the nap is all along one side. So into this very firm chain are injected these hair thin pieces of nylon. And it's very, they're very secure. Mm -hmm. You might have an occasional shed, but you know, I'm tugging on it and nothing's happening. Now most of the time when you get a skein, it will be in a skein, which uh -huh. means it's not a pole ball. You can't just start knitting with right. it. You have to take Untwist it apart. It. Mm -hmm untwist it. Mm -hmm. Now you can find the ends where it's been tied. In this case, they've given us a little tag so we know sure. that that's the end. That's very and you're clever. just going to clip that mm -hmm. and then wind it right. into a ball. You want to put it on, on, a, on an umbrella or on a sure. chair or actually have somebody hold it for you. You don't want to lay it on the table right. and wind it. And better, better to have someone hold it or on a swift right. because Keep on a chair, secure. put some tension on it. Right. On a chair, it might pull up into itself yeah. and it's, sure. it's very, I mean, here's my ball <laughs> that yes. I've been knitting from right. and you can see it's just fallen mm -hmm. apart. Well that's fine because I'm near the end of this swatch sure. and it's not going to matter. Now the two things to watch for when you knit with it mm -hmm. are you cannot go on autopilot because you... auto is not our friend. Okay. You have to make sure that your stitch, your needle is going into the yarn and not just into the hair. Okay. Because you're going to drop stitches. That Right. Nice. So you want to make sure that you're catching Chained. that chain place. You want to make sure exactly. you're catching the chain place. Okay. okay. So that's one thing. The next thing is that um, garter stitch, which is what the bottom half of this swatch is, mm -hmm. is fuller than stockinette because garter stitch is a thicker stitch. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
the hairs will want to go to the pearl side, but this is this is the knit side and it's still plenty Lay full. Lay it down so they can see the width here. Okay. Let's one of the things I've noticed, Laura, is that from the swatch that you mm -hmm. just did, the fiber looks a little more curled right. than the nap on this one. So mm -hmm. what is the difference? The difference is that this was wound on a ball winder, so okay. it was a fairly tight ball, and it got crimped. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, The fiber got crimped while it was in the ball. When you look at the end that was on the outside, right. it looks much more like this. Okay. All we have to do to fix this is a little steam. Okay, so you never oh, put the steam yes, directly. You, no, you, you don't iron it and you don't, you just steam. Didn't. Just wave okay. some steam at cool. it. Cool. Okay. okay, and, and that then. will just loosen everything. Great. And just okay. kind of comb it with your hands the way you want it to go. So one thing that you do want to do if you want it to be very furry is to liberate the loops. Okay, now mine are very, very furry because after I've finished knitting, I have gone back in Oh, and, and actually used the needle tip tipped. To, to liberate clean. these loops yes. where the fiber has caught in wow, the stitch. Oh, Laura, that is Can you is take your really fingers great. and just brush it, or the needle's still no, the best the way? No, the needle's still the okay. best okay. way. If you get a little tired of that, you can kind of do it like this. Right, just pick at it. Well, we all should be going home and using this. This I, is, it is so really much fabulous. fun. Great. And I could attest that because I just did it. <laughs> well, thanks. That was just great, Laura. Thank you, Barry. Thanks, Shay.